We've got breaking news from Colorado. Another school shooting, this time at a science school not far from Denver. CNN's Nick Watt joins us now. Nick, what is the latest on this? Well, the headline, Anderson, is that eight students shot by two of their fellow students on campus in the middle of a regular school day, Tuesday lunchtime. And according to the local sheriff, he says this could have been a lot worse. Luckily, there's a sheriff's substation just a block away from the school. Authorities from the school called in pretty quick. Within two minutes, deputies were on the scene. They could hear gunshots ringing out as they entered the campus. They engaged with the shooters. We're also told that when they arrived, there was some sort of struggle going on between people from the school, unclear who they were, and these two suspects who had shot their fellow students at two different locations on campus. Now, the tragic irony here is that the Columbine shooting just over 20 years ago, just seven or eight miles away from here. And one of the criticisms after that was that law enforcement didn't react quick enough. Back then, law enforcement would tend to set up a perimeter around a school. Now they go in and engage the shooter. And that is what happened here. And as I say, the sheriff saying that that speed of response, he thinks, saved some lives. Those two shooters now in custody, they're described as adults. One is an adult, I'm sorry, one is a juvenile, males, both students of that school. Warrants are now being worked on to uh, search a car that they left on the property and also their two homes. And the sheriff's kind of tight-lipped on the details. He said, listen, there will be criminal prosecution, there will be criminal charges here, so I'm not giving too much away. But initial reports that there was perhaps a third shooter, they say that was not the case. It was just an abundance of caution. They went through that school room by room to make sure that there so, wasn't a third shooter. As I say, those two in custody. And let, let me ask you, that you said one was an adult, one was a kid. Uh, by adult, you mean it, over the age of 18? Because I mean, uh, you said they both went to that school, was an adult who yeah. had already graduated. You know? Well, I am assuming what you just said. That I mean, the sheriff said they both were at the school. One is a juvenile, one is an adult. So, okay. yeah, I'm assuming that one of them has just turned 18. Okay. But, so, yeah, that, right. that's where we are. Both of them in custody. All right. And, and the wounded, do we know how they're doing? Yeah, so eight wounded, Anderson. Three have already been discharged from the hospital. Another three listed in good or stable condition. And... Uh, Another two are still listed in serious condition. We were told by the sheriff that four were in serious. They were going into surgery a couple of hours ago. That's now down to two, so moving in the right direction. Eight injured, three already released, right. two still serious. Nick Watt, I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Joining me now is author Dave uh, Cullen, who's written both about the deadly school shooting in Parkland, Florida, and the Columbine shooting that Nick just uh, referenced. Um, the idea of two shooters potentially involved, oftentimes there's reports of two shooters early on, and it's just uh, eyewitnesses seeing the same person in, in multiple locations. Uh, but if there are, in fact, two shooters, that's quite rare, other than Columbine. Yeah, it's pretty rare. Uh, the, the, the FBI calls it a dyad. It's a whole kind of phenomenon that was the... Uh the snipers of D.C., mm. I just remembered one during the break in Halifax. Mm. Um, it was foiled. There was a, a young woman from Chicago who actually flew there. Mm. Uh, and actually, there were three people involved. Sort of, It was mainly the two. Um, but they were... So it's happened, but it's, it is rare. Exactly, exactly. It, and there's usually a leader and a follower. It's a whole different specific psychology going on there, usually. And, and uh, according to the sheriff's office, one of the suspects is juvenile, what one's adult. Again, we don't know exactly what, what that means. It I, could be I thought very it was well. a middle school, so that's weird. But well, it, it, I think it goes up to, oh. uh, to, to 12th. Uh, gotcha. to 12th uh, I should double check on that. Um, but in terms of like the, the police response, as Nick was saying, it all has changed since Columbine and... Most, according to the FBI, I think most of the fatalities in school shootings or the the uh, the violence goes on in the first six minutes. So, so police response time is critical. It's fantastic. It's complete change, and it's because of Columbine, the active shooter protocol, and and also, and sadly, the perpetrators follow this stuff too, and they know and they know they have to maximize their firepower very quickly and and get it off. But yeah, it has, and so, that's why they usually commit suicide too. A lot of times these, these shooters have studied other attacks. Yeah, almost always. And, and specifically they tend to uh, study uh, the Columbine killers. I just found a graphic just this week uh, that actually shows more than 40 of them have actually documented, you know, in their writings, um, studying Eric and Dylan from, um, from Columbine. And then so many of those studying each other, there's a whole web of them. Hmm. But it, generally traces back to those two who 
the perpetrators see those two as kind of the founding fathers of this movement. It's so um, crazy to think about it in those ugh, terms. They call pre Parkland. I was blocking about fifty a week. There are these kids online. There's a whole group of them called the TCC for true crime community that sort of idolize them or at least pretend to to be cool with each other. Uh, so by the way, that was, I said before, Parkland, after every shooting, it stops cold. Mm. Like they, they, they just, you know, I wake up to 10, 20, 30 of these a day, but they stop as soon as it happens, usually for about a week. And then they pick up. Parkland, they never came back mm. until about like the last month or two, they're starting to gradually, slowly. I kind of wonder if it's Emma Gonzalez and people like, you know, David Hogg became more cool than being cool by being so edgy that I'm a rebel. I think they just made it like less cool to be these kids. So, mm. I'm, you know, I, I see it mostly by, you know, them, you know, waking up and just like all these horrible mm. things to me. Um, so that's sort of my data point. But, but it is, I mean, the, the fact that there's sort of this uh, idolization of these people, again, it, it, it just, again, emphasizes, you know, my belief you shouldn't name these people, you shouldn't mm -hmm. focus on them. Uh, Worse, it, we're exporting it. The uh, other countries, the ones in Siberia and where they don't have news right. shows like this is really scary to me. Uh, Dave Cullen, appreciate it. Thank you very much.